Welcome back to Mindful Escape, the podcast that inspires you to live your best life. My name is Leighton Dewitt and I'm your host and today we have Vadrine Boulay on the show. Vadrine had hopes of becoming a lawyer. She went to law school in London and then decided to start her own business and now is a business coach and runs retreats in the Seychelles. This is a really inspiring story because she talks about how her path was so lined up to become a lawyer, go through law school, but because of the steps that happened before, she completely changed that path and is now living her dream life. This is an amazing episode, so listen closely and we'll jump straight in. Bedrine, thank you for coming on to Mindful Escape. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Vadimin Boulay. I am a business coach, multi-passionate entrepreneur. Um, I am currently based in the Seychelles Islands. I have I was born and raised here, although I've traveled quite a little bit throughout my life. And um, I've recently started a new company, which uh, is based here in the Seychelles in the retreat industry. So I currently have my fingers in a couple of different pots at the moment. Amazing. And I've been watching what you're doing and the things that are coming up and it all looks really exciting. So uh, we'll come on to that a little bit later. What I wanted to do first, if it's okay, is jump back to just before you started your entrepreneurial journey, which I think was around six, seven years ago. What were you doing before and what was it that triggered you to take the leap, essentially? Yeah, so in about 2017, I moved to London to study law. And um, at the time, I was running a very casual hobby blog. So I started a travel and lifestyle blog when I moved to London. My angle was sort of um, island girl moves to the big city. That was kind of my my personal brand. And my blog actually did really, really well. Um, I, I did uh, affiliates. I did brand partnerships all on a very casual sort of level while I was studying. Um, and funnily enough, I decided while I was there that I wanted to be a, a blogger, right? I wanted to be a professional blogger. That's what everyone was doing in 2018, right? Blogging, YouTubing, and I wanted to do that as well. Um, and I always say it feels a little bit full circle, but I actually attended a retreat uh, back in 2018 in Bali on how to become a professional blogger. And it was after that retreat that one of the hosts basically said, hey, you know, I love your content. I was doing Pinterest and Instagram and blogging and uh, WordPress design. And she was like, do you want to be my content creator and virtual assistant? And up until that moment, I had never considered freelancing or online service provision. So that for me was the moment when all the doors opened and it was like, oh my God, there is this whole thing that's out there. Um, so I went back to London and I studied law while working for starting to work for her while running my blog and essentially while I was in law school I set myself up such that when I graduated I was essentially um full-time in my business and yeah I did take it full-time wow okay so <laughs> it's it's funny because um there's a couple of people that have said on LinkedIn, how do you manage to do so much and how you're so efficient? And now I'm thinking you studied law while setting up a business and working freelance. I'm like, okay, it all makes sense now. You've learned to do a lot of things in a short amount of time. So <laughs> well done to you. And um, so through that transition there, was there at any point that you thought, I'm not going to continue with the law, I'm just going to do my business? Or what was going through your mind at that stage? Yeah, well, this is something I used to talk a lot about. When I moved to London, I had a little bit of a, maybe a culture shock, but also a reality check in the sense that um, the expectations of living in central London corporate London was very different to the realities of it. And I had this expectation of what I was going to be as a lawyer. I had always thought I was going to be a lawyer. And I had these big plans when I moved there to be a lawyer. Um, and then I started obviously studying and, and working, doing internships and, and experience in London. And I it was very quickly brought into, oh my God, there's so much that I disagree with about corporate systems. There's so much I disagree with about traditional careers. And um, what I call the treadmill of life that people tend to put you on. And so um, I very openly have talked about kind of my mental health struggles while I was in law school, depression, anxiety, and the point to the point where my business that I was building was my escape. And there was a so many moments where I was like, do I continue the law degree? Do I 
quit. What am I doing? Um, I actually took a big trip in my second year. I went backpacking, you know, the whole find myself story. And uh, when I came back from that, I decided, you know what, I, I, I took back control, essentially. And I was like, I have all of these opinions. I have all these things I want to do. I'm going to finish my law degree from me. But I know I'm not going to do anything with it. But I like to I like to see things through. And so I finished my law degree from me very intentionally with that decision of I'm not doing it for anyone else. And then when I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and do what it is that I really want to do. Yeah, that's so good. I think a lot of people in that position trying to juggle so much would probably think I need to give something up. Was there any part when you decided, okay, I'm definitely going to finish the law degree? Was there any part of you that thought, oh, I'll put the freelancing on hold? No, because I knew that I wanted to do a lot, as you said, in a short amount of time. And if I am completely honest, I think something did give, and that was a little bit of my degree. So while I was finishing it, I also knew that when I finished, I wanted to have my business set up. And so I always say, I think I could have gotten a better degree, but um, I'm not, I, I, I have a really good degree. I have, I have a second class. I have a two one. And so I'm really chuffed with that. Um, and I finished uh, law school. And so it did give a little bit in that way, but I have no regrets because I have the degree. And then I was able to, to go ahead and start my business as well. And had I, I think, had I put the business on hold, I might have allowed other voices to kind of take control, but slowly chipping away at it allowed me to just to stay in it and, and to commit to the process of it yeah that's so good and when you say other voices was it voices in your head or was it the people around you that were kind of giving you a push in a certain direction mostly around me <laughs> um I would say I've always been quite quite self-confident um but you know there is this perception in our society that there is a traditional trajectory that everybody needs to follow. And I think within the university, there were people in my personal life as well who were kind of saying, oh my God, the online space is crazy. What are you doing? You need a plan B. You can't do this forever. Like you need to have a solid job and, and, and then you can do this on the side kind of thing. Um, and that there was a lot of that, a um, little bit condescending sometimes. I find that I have lots of conversations with young founders who have come across this kind of uh, prejudice against sort of age and like, what, what does that mean in terms of what you can accomplish and what, what does your opinion mean? Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. But there was a lot of that, um, that I had to build my own self-trust in order to hear and say, I respect what you're saying because that comes from your lived experience, but I don't necessarily believe that and I have to trust myself to do what I need to do. Yeah, which is often very difficult when you're younger, right? And usually those people advising you are older, more experienced in inverted commas. When you finished your law degree and essentially you went full time on your business, were you thinking about getting a job then or were you just backing yourself to get the business going and where were you? What was the stage of the business? Were you ready to go all in or did you need financial support or what was going on? Yeah. So by the time I graduated, so what I did after I landed that first client was because I had already grown um, a very good following. I had about a thousand daily views on my blog. My Pinterest was really big. My Instagram was really big. I had a free audience anyway, while I was at university, I had built a, a lifestyle brand. And so what I was doing um, I couldn't work too much because I was a student. So obviously I had to stay within those lines, but I spent time networking and reaching out to the audience that I had built. And so I got a couple of really high level clients such that by the time I was finished, I was positioned to be able to um, support myself. Pandemic hit. So I did come back home. And so I was lucky to be able to come home and have somewhere to come back to. Um, but in terms of being full time with the business, I was full time and I was able to already start looking at expanding and growing and next steps. Amazing. What was your biggest challenge at that stage? Um, I would say figuring out the direction I wanted to take my business in because while I was law school plus uh, growing the business, I had 
tried a couple of different things. So my expertise, my skill set was quite varied. And so I did web design, I did social media management, I did copywriting, I did, um, oh my God, a whole range of virtual assisting. I did a whole range of different things. And I had also started coaching a little bit um, people in other freelancers, uh, startup solopreneurs and things like that. And so I had to decide what the direction was that I wanted to go in, how I wanted to present myself. Now that I was no longer a student, I could no longer talk about life at university. I had to figure out, um, was I going to be a lifestyle brand? Was I going to be a founder slash business type of company? And that was one of the biggest challenges, actually making a choice and deciding I'm going to stick with this, see what happens and, uh, and go with it. I think that can be really hard. If you're in that position and you've got all these options and, and most people have, although they might in their mind think, oh, I've got to go in this direction. You've actually got so many options. And when it comes to choosing your direction, you're spoiled for choice. So what advice would you give to someone who is in that position right now? And they're thinking, actually, I don't really know what to do and I don't know what direction to go in. Yeah, it's, it's the flip side of the same coin. It's, it's the blessing of being your own boss. And it's also the curse of being your own boss, that choice. Um, but for me, it's always been, I believe that I have, I have so much time. And I know that I have so much time and I have deep trust in myself to try so many different things. And so for me, it's picking one to do now, knowing that there will be time for me to try the rest later. And it's, it's a question of prioritizing because, you know, as well, when you decide on a business model to go forward with, it's not just always based on, um, yes, it's based on what's the most exciting, what's the most fulfilling, but also what's the best decision for what's going on in your life right now right? Is it profits that you're going for? Is it scaling back that you're going for? So there's a, a range of decisions that go into picking the direction. But my advice really would be to pick the one that you're most interested in doing now, knowing that you can have it all, you just can't have it all at the same time. And you can always stack later. Or if you don't enjoy this thing, you can, and you're not a failure if you decide that this thing isn't the thing for you and you decide to set it aside. Yeah, that's really great. I actually had a conversation with my coach last week and he was saying, if you've got three ideas right now, write all three down and then know that you can do the other two later and just focus on one because yeah. otherwise you're just going to get too distracted. And it's such, yeah, good advice. In terms of doing what you're passionate about, I speak to a lot of people and they don't really know they have an idea what they like and what they don't like, but they don't know what they're passionate about or what their purpose is. So they're trying to figure that out before they move in a certain direction. Did you experience that or what's your thoughts? I think passion and purpose are two different things. I think passions um, can be, can be ever changing and they can be sort of in the moment, right? I've had different passions across the past six, 10 years, in fact, that I've been technically creating content online. I started my first blog in 2014. And so your passions will change as your interests will change as you grow as a person. Your purpose is more of that kind of overarching, what kind of impact do you want to leave on the world type of thing. And that's something that I think we all are on a journey of discovering. I think we we place a lot of emphasis on figuring out what it is. And while it is important to figure it out, I also love the journey of discovering. Whereas your passions, like I can say right now that I'm passionate about retreats, right? Where I wasn't a couple of years ago because that wasn't the phase of life that I was in. And so um, I think it takes a lot of self-awareness to say, what are the things that interest me? And I think that often what I see with inspired individuals is they have a passion but they don't realize that that passion could become a business or that passion can be like, can be, they can do something with that. Right. Cause they'd say, Oh, I like doing this thing. I, I really enjoy doing this thing, whether it's art or writing or um, graphics or whatever it is. And then you say to them, so you are passionate about something. They're like, yeah, I guess. And have you thought about turning that into a business? No, I guess I haven't. <laughs> yeah. With the purpose I've found that as I've taken steps along my journey, it keeps evolving and it keeps getting bigger, essentially, because as you progress as a person and an individual, you grow and evolve. And then you realize, actually, I could do more or I could help more people or whatever it might be, whatever your direction is. 
some people get to this crossroads and I think you mentioned it as well about not knowing what their purpose is but as you did you kind of explored things and figured it out on the way and just enjoying that journey if you are unsure about which passion to go for or which what your actual purpose is or the direction is that you want to go in and you're essentially blocking yourself either mentally or physically what would you do or what would you advise someone in that situation the answer that immediately comes to mind is to broaden your perspective because sometimes we don't know what we don't know and if you're in a place where you're thinking i don't know what my purpose is i don't know what my passion is and i don't even know what it could be and and sometimes it it takes hearing other people talk about their passions and their purposes and seeing what other people are doing in order to get that inspiration and so broadening your understanding of what people are doing out in the world and to give like a concrete example it's travel right go out get out of your comfort zone travel and do something new read more books right go on google and type in like um what are passions for people who are interested in writing right like like broaden your perspectives on what's happening out there in the world and you'll allow yourself to unlock these things that you didn't even know were possible for you. Yeah. I'm going to pick up on the point you said there about getting outside your comfort zone because for me that's been massive and I started with traveling and I I have traveled a little bit before but not to the extreme that I have over the last year and a half and just doing things that I wouldn't normally do, speeches, attending events and yeah, just doing things that normally Leighton would say, no way. And now just, yeah, just feeling that uncomfortableness and just doing it. I think it's so amazing. And you grow as an individual, you learn about yourself. And as you say, you're broadening your perspective or what things you could potentially go deeper with or learn more about. And I guess the other thing is that usually when you try something new, you're pretty bad at it. And it's being comfortable with that being a beginner again. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's what a lot of people struggle with because of that outside uh, fear of that outside judgment, right? And that that feeling that everybody's watching me, everybody's waiting for me to fail, you know, everybody's waiting for me to figure it out, and whatever. When it when that's really not the case, and and you know, I, I really really believe, and when I say this to people, that you need to build a deep trust in yourself in order to be a business owner and to trust that every step that you take to try and learn new things and do the thing and invest and move, it could all, you know, catch fire and fail, but that's okay. And it's that deep trust in yourself that keeps you going to say that you'll try again, you'll keep going, you'll continue to grow exactly as you said, everything makes you a better person, teaches you something new and then all of it is okay. Yeah. With the building deep trust in yourself, would you say that comes down to confidence a lot of the time and building confidence? It does. And I think the the conversation of that is in mindset work, right? And I, I am a business coach. My work is in strategy and in, you know, formulas and, and, and all that good stuff. But before I ever invested in my business, I invested in my mindset and it's in um, uh, unraveling subconscious thoughts, conscious or subconscious thoughts that we have, all of these societal conditioning, all of all of these things that we carry from everywhere we've been in our lives. Um, we need to face those first in order to build self-confidence, build, build self-trust. And, and also with that, understand that it's a work in progress. I think everybody always asks me, like, how can I be more confident online? How can I show up more? How can I do X, Y, and Z? Well, you can start to do it and you can work at it every day with the understanding that you may not ever get to this place that you think is this perfect place of confidence, right? There is no perfect place of confidence. It's literally a work in progress every day. You have to choose every day to work on yourself and to show up as the person that you would like the you know to be. Yeah, absolutely. Just keep practicing. Get outside yeah. your comfort zone. Yeah. From 
2017 to now, I'm sure there's been a lot of lessons that you've learned along the way. <laughs> Would you pick out maybe one or two of your biggest lessons that you could share with us? Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest lessons has been not to get too hung up on business failures, right? And or not to see business failures as personal failures. Because I find that um, a lot of business owners, you know, they'll have an offer flop or an idea that doesn't materialize or whatever it is that they see as having failed. And it sometimes stops them from trying again. The biggest lesson that I learned was that Failure in your business is not personal and it doesn't mean that you are a failure. You need to keep going and you need to try again. I've had offers. I, I mentioned this on my LinkedIn. I think it was last week. I have a, a folder in my Google Drive of archived offers. These are offers that haven't worked out or that in my books failed or, or, or I simply no longer wanted to offer anymore because I wasn't aligned. And I could have thought to myself, you know, this, this didn't work out. I'm not meant to do this. This is not for me. Or I could have thought, this thing didn't work. What can I learn from it and how can I move on? So that's really the first thing. And I think another big thing is in, in terms of investing. You know, I talk a lot about money and investing in your business, investing in yourself. And the undercurrent of what I love to talk about that people don't is investments that don't go the way you want them to go, which I think really um, people run up against this issue of I invested once, I learned this thing and it didn't work out, right? And yes, while that can be a serious case, oftentimes of money lost, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try again or reinvest and or, or, or continue to look for a different way to solve a solution. There, there are multiple solutions out there for different types of people. And to stop just because somebody told you something and it didn't work, instead of continuing to find a different way is you know, it's the, it's the easiest way to kill your dream, essentially. Yeah, it's interesting, actually, that you refer to money, but then before you were also talking about your time, essentially, because they're both energy, right? And if you're putting, yeah. whether it's time or, or money, and you're putting that into the business, and it doesn't work out, it doesn't actually matter whether it's your time or your money, it doesn't mean that you're a failure, it's take that lesson, and then move on to the next. Yeah. What advice would you give to your younger self? Let's go back to Let's go to around 2016, 2017, kind of like that transition point. No, I love that little girl so much and there's this activity that I often you know, share with people, which I, I read about once, I can't remember for where, but it's this activity where you sort of look at a photo of yourself when you were younger. And I dare you to try and say the words you say to yourself now to that little girl that you see in the picture. It's one of my favorite activities. So when I, when I think to myself, what would I say to, to my, young, my younger self? It's that, you know, what you think you want at this time in your life is, is not at all what your life is going to turn out as. And I think um, I was a very sort of high achieving academic um, young woman when I was at school in, in doing my A-levels and all of that. And I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect, to show up for other people, to, um, to aim really, really high in a way that sacrificed a lot of my health and, and my well-being and all of that. And I think I would, I would tell her that it's going to be okay and that these chapters in life none of them really matter now <laughs> you know <laughs> eight ten years down the line what you get in your a-levels doesn't matter <laughs> today like um what you know all of this drama that we that we have that we think um is is going to last with us forever it doesn't and sort of trust yourself is that is that that big, big thing that I would share to any young girl. It's like, trust yourself, trust that what you have to say matters um, and that you deserve to be in the rooms that you want to be in. You deserve to say what's on your, on your mind, on your chest and your opinions matter just as much as everyone else's. Yeah, great advice. Tell us a little bit about what you're up to now. 
there was a post that I saw you put about creating your second business while you were already running your first. Could you expand on that a little bit? Tell us about the challenges and why you decided to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been running my business coaching consultancy now. It's been that same sort of structure since I was in law school, essentially. Um, And I decided to launch a retreats business here in the Seychelles. The idea for that was simply that um, I wanted to pay homage to the islands where I was born and raised. And um, I saw there was an opportunity here that wasn't being tapped into, particularly in the business retreat space, in the team retreat space, wellness retreat space. And so I have always been a big supporter of following those poles of curiosity. And it's all about how you're going to balance it all. Like I said, I'm a business coach. I'm a strategist. I love systems. And so for me, it was doing the things that I've been telling my clients to do, right? What does it look like to set up the systems for yourself so that you can still continue running my coaching business. And yes, that has meant scaling back a little bit, but it's it's that conscious choice of what you're going to do. And again, using everything that I teach my clients when it comes to starting a business to starting this, this second company. And it's been, it's really, really exciting. The response has been really amazing. And that's, that's always good as well. And um, I'm finding I'm really enjoying the challenge of balancing both of them. Yeah, it's great. As someone who is obviously a high achiever and puts a lot of pressure on yourself to do all these amazing things, I'm a big fan of mindfulness and managing your mental health as well. Is there anything that you do to help with that? Yeah, I, like I said, I live a very intention, I try to live a very intentional um, life and and try to be quite self-aware. Again, like it's a work in progress. Some days I'm an absolute failure at it and like nothing goes according to plan. Um, But then, you know, you have to give yourself grace. But I really try to fill my life with pockets of joy. That's what I call it. So pockets of joy where when I'm feeling stressed, I will go for a swim in the ocean. You know, I'm very lucky to live by the ocean. So I'll go in the ocean and I'll ground myself in the sand or If I need an escape, I love to read. I'll pop into a fantasy book. Um, I love to work out. So I take care of my my, my physical body. Um, I'll journal. I'll I'll listen to meditations. I'll put on binaural beats to to, take care of my mind. And I'm really prioritizing time with my loved ones. So my family, my partner, my friends. Um, While I'm the type of person who wants to get it all done right away, I have learned the hard way from burning out before that I need to fit in those pockets of joy, those pockets of peace so that it really does feel sustainable to do all the things I want to do. And do you have a a strategy in order to do that? Um, Time blocking is the simple strategy for it. So I I love using my calendar to actually uh, block things out. And especially when it comes to people's availability to book calls with me. So my workout is blocked out in my calendar. My um, LinkedIn engagement time is blocked out. Um, any any days that I want to leave off for friends and family, that's blocked out. Like, if you want to do something with me, you have to get it on my calendar. <laughs> like, everything is in my calendar. Um, and I find that's what works for me. It doesn't necessarily work for everyone. But um, I like to feel like I'm in control of my time. And not to say that I follow everything to the T always, but it really helps me to have things structured in in, in that way. Yeah, that's so good. And I, I really like the pockets of joy thing. I recently was redoing my schedule and I was scheduling in times for fun where there was no commitment and I could just do whatever I want because then you don't feel guilty about stepping away from yeah. the business and, and doing the things that you feel like you should be doing. And yeah, just enjoy it. So that's great. Yeah. Before we finish up, do you want to tell us a little bit about your retreat that's coming up? Yes. Yeah, so we've officially launched our flagship Seychelles retreats, the Island of Influence Seychelles Business Retreats. Um, we intend to host these a couple of times a year. Obviously, 2024 will be our inaugural retreats. Um, as of right now, we have a March date secured and a May date secured. Maybe by the time that your listeners are listening to this, we'll have a couple more dates for 2024 as well. Um, but these retreats are a seven day experience for founders, entrepreneurs, leaders, creatives who know that they deserve some time off and love to travel and want to visit a a bucket list location like the Seychelles, but also at the same time to immerse in workshops um, around business and personal development, which will be hosted by myself 
and guest speakers for each workshop. And it's really an opportunity to consider the bigger picture, take a step back from everyday life, step out of your comfort zone, as we've talked about, and really be in a space that is conducive to networking, to thinking and to innovating, being creative and considering are you really on the path that you want to be on? And how do you continue to align your actions to your goals? Yeah, amazing. And where can people find you online? I am primarily on LinkedIn. So Barmin Boule on LinkedIn is where you can find me. And then from there, all of the all of the extra links are, are popped in there. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This is really fun. And there we have it. Thank you so much for listening. The biggest takeaway for me was around building deep trust in yourself. It's so important to have that confidence because there's always going to be distractions. There's always going to be noise. There's always going to be you shoulds and you shouldn'ts. But deep down, you know in your heart what you want to do. You have to follow that feeling and really step outside your comfort zone to do the things that you want to do in life not what other people think you should do or say you should do. Follow your heart, take the steps that you need to to fulfill your dreams, follow your passions and find your purpose. And only that way you will end up living the life that you truly deserve. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you found value, make sure you share it with a friend and I'll see you same time next week.